In this section, we discuss the Danzig Wolf reformulation and we see its connection with the Lagrangian relaxation. Our point of departure is the same as the one we had in the case of the Lagrangian relaxation. So we have a mixed integer linear programming problem of the same form. We have n variables xj, which are all greater than or equal to zero, and the first p of them must be integral. We have a system of inequality ax less than or equal to b, and we maximize cx. As always, zi is the optimal value of this mixed integer program. As we did for the Lagrangian relaxation, we partition the constraints in our system into the red constraints and green constraints. And we define the set Q to be the set of vectors that satisfy the green constraint and integrality constraints. The main result that we saw for the Lagrangian relaxation is that the Lagrangian dual is equal to the max of Cx subject to red constraints and x in the convex hull of the set Q. The danzig wolf reformulation is essentially another way of obtaining the same exact bound. And geometrically, it's very simple to understand it exactly starting from this uh, maximization problem over here. Essentially, what we want to do is uh, write down the convex hull of Q as the convex hull of uh, a finite set of points plus the conic hull of a finite set of rays. In particular, let Vk for K and K be a finite set of points in ConQ that contains all the extreme points of ConQ. And let Rh for age in age be a finite set of rays of the convex hull of Q that contains all the extreme rays of the convex hull of Q. In particular, note that we don't need the first set to be exactly the set of extreme points and the second set be exactly the set of extreme rays, but they can be larger sets. In any case, then we can write any point in the convex hull of Q as the sum of lambda k vk plus the sum of mu h r h, where lambdas give convex combinations, so lambda non-negative and they sum to 1, and mu give conic combinations, so they're just non-negative. In order to obtain the danzig wolf reformulation, we now just substitute the x in the formula for the Lagrangian dual that we saw earlier. So we replace x in the objective function and in the constraints, and then we replace the constraint x in the convex hull of Q with the constraints that we just introduced. Let's do that. We obtain the following. So ZLD is the max of. This is the objective function where we replaced x with the new formula. Then these constraints are those obtained from a1x less than or equal to b1 by again replacing x. And then we have the convex combination and conic combination. This is the definition of the danzig wolf relaxation of the original problem. Note that at this point, this is a linear programming problem and the variables are the lambdas and mu. There's no x anymore. If instead of a relaxation, we want a reformulation of our original mixed integer linear programming problem, we only need to enforce integrality constraints on the first p variables. But of course, we don't have these x variables anymore. So in order to enforce these constraints, we, we have once again to substitute x with the formula that we just wrote in the previous slide. And we obtain this condition over here. And this is called the danzig wolf reformulation. What is clear from both the relaxation and the reformulation is that they both have a huge number of variables. In fact, they have at least one variable for every vertex and for every extreme ray of the convex hull of Q. Let's now consider a setting that often appears in real world problems. And this is the case where the convex hull of Q is bounded. In this case, the formulation at least simplifies a little bit because we don't have any more extreme rays. And so we can trash all the part of the formulation regarding the rays R H and the multipliers mu. If we get rid of all these parts, then the danzig wolf reformulation takes this form. And now consider an even more special setting, which is when Q is a pure integer set and we choose the VKs to be the set of all points in Q. In this case, it's simple to show that the integrality conditions in red over here can be replaced by just the conditions lambda k in 0, 1 for every k in k. To see this equivalence, 
one should notice that these binary conditions together with the equation sum of lambda k equal to 1 will allow only one variable lambda k to be equal 1 while all the others will be 0. So let's see now an example. And we consider once again the symmetric TSP and its Lagrangian relaxation that we studied. In this example, our set Q was the set of incidence vectors of one trees, and our Lagrangian dual took exactly this form. In fact, our red constraints were exactly the degree constraint for every node different from one. And so by theorem 8.2, the Lagrangian dual is the optimal value of this linear programming problem. So now in order to write down the Danzig wall for relaxation, we need to write down the vertices of the convex hull of Q. So let T be the family of one trees of G. Then every point in the convex hull of Q can be written as a convex combination of the incidence vectors of the one trees of G. Therefore, X takes this form. Now to simplify the notation, for every one tree T, we use a C of T to denote the cost of the corresponding one tree. Then we can replace the X variables in our formulation with the formula that we just obtained and replace x in conf q with exactly this condition. So let's do that and that's what we obtain. Our red constraints takes this form. In fact, for every t in t, we have that the sum of the xe for e in delta of i is exactly the cardinality of delta i intersected t. To obtain the Danzig Wolf reformulation, we only need to replace lambda t greater than or equal to zero with lambda t binary for every t in t. Next, I want to show to you how the Lagrangian dual can be viewed as the linear programming dual of the Danzig Wolf relaxation. And this argument will tie back with our very first uh, observations about the Lagrangian relaxation. So let's look at the Danzig Wolf relaxation and let's write down its dual. Now you can check that the dual is exactly this minimization problem over here. In particular, the pi variables are associated with the inequalities corresponding to the system a1x less than or equal to b1, and the variable z corresponds to the equation sum of lambda k for k and k equal to 1. Our inequalities, of course, correspond to the original variables, so we had one for every k in k and one for every h in h. Now, the first thing we should notice is that the first bunch of constraints can be rewritten in the form above. Everything we're doing is just leave z on the left hand and bring everything else to the right hand. So let's then replace these inequalities with a new form in this system. Here is what we obtain. So now let's examine this minimization problem. And let's see exactly where z appears. So it appears in the objective function, so we are minimizing z, and z only appears in this first bunch of constraints, and we have that z must be greater than or equal to a bunch of values. Therefore, the optimal z will be exactly the maximum of these values. This allows us to once again rewrite this minimization problem in the following form. We're minimizing pi b1 plus the max for k and k of c minus pi a1 times vk, where pi must be in the polyhedron of the pi's greater than or equal to zero that satisfy all these inequalities for every age in age. And at this point, this should look familiar because this is exactly the Lagrangian dual. The only difference with what we saw in section 8.1 is that here we're using pi, where there we were using lambda instead. In particular, the formula here in the objective function is exactly the Lagrangian relaxation that we saw when we discussed the fact that the Lagrangian relaxation is the maximum of a finite number of affine functions. And the pi must be in this polyhedron, and this is exactly the polyhedron that we denoted also by p in section 8.1, and the reason we introduce this polyhedron P is because the Lagrangian bound Z L R of pi is finite if and only if pi belongs to this polyhedron. And with this connection to the Lagrangian dual, we conclude our discussion about the Danzig-Wolf reformulation.